Well, nothing says Chicago more than a deep dish pizza for breakfast. Hi guys, I am here in Chicago attending the Chicago Midwinter meeting and it's been a great meeting, very well attended. Seems like people are coming back out of the woodworks and attending these meetings once again. And it's also the official launch of the Total Vac. And I wanted to just share with you here as a quick uh, tutorial, a couple of tips that I think are also important along with some of the troubleshooting that I just shared with you. The idea that in previous videos I have shared the concept, the three-step irrigation concept that I use, which is the idea of agitation and then evacuation of the fluid and then um, the addition of hypochlorite. And in this case, I just wanted to quickly show you on this true tooth uh, the, the way it worked. So we're going to add a little bit of red ink to these two canals and then we evacuated but you can see that after evacuation there is still a film of this red ink remaining and so now we're coming back with the ultrasonic and water to create that agitation you can see the agitation creates a lot of bubbles and these bubbles are actually at an ultrastructural microscopic level uh, they are moving everywhere even though it doesn't you can't see it with the naked eye the uh, this is catalytic action of the water molecules is having a kind of a uh, cavitation agitation and acoustic streaming is uh, constantly pr putting pressure and shock waves uh, on the walls of the root canal that helps clean out this process then you can evacuate the water and then add Triton using the total vac, for example, here in the mode two. And now you have Triton to do its combined continuous chelation with the addition of hypochlorite to disinfect and clean out these walls even better. Now, one other additional trick that I wanna show you is the addition of ultrasonic energy to Triton. And you can see because of this continuous chelation with the surfactants, and with the saponification agents, as soon as we add a little bit of ultrasonic energy to the Triton, you can see how this is creating this in incredible foaming detergent effect, almost like a, a car washer, a dishwasher. It is going to have this effect on the root canal. And you can see that the effect goes far beyond the tip of the ultrasonic. So the ultrasonic does not have to go all the way down to the end of the road. It could be just at the, uh, a little bit into the orifice at the lower power setting and the vibrations will get uh, transferred through the, uh, these shock waves that are sent forth from the movement of the tip, the piezoelectric movement of the tip of the ultrasonic down through the Triton and create this, uh, this effect. So uh, I, again, going back to a previous video I had done in terms of inexpensive solutions to get around some of the more expensive options that are around to do this type of uh, you know, disinfection, such as the use of lasers or uh, the use of uh, this gentle wave and the other devices, just the use of this really inexpensive machine, the piezoelectric ultrasonic, with the right solution allows you to use the piezoelectric effect to transfer this uh, effect, the catalytic effect on the irrigant to both warm it up, agitate it, cavitate it, and create acoustic streaming eddies down beyond the, uh, the tip of the ultrasonic to do a much better job of cleaning than you can actually do. All right, guys, just wanted to share with you this little um, demo. I will be doing more videos to, again, talk about this concept of irrigation, which is far more important than any of the other, you know, obturation and, uh, and instrumentation, all of those things. So I'm going to uh, focus on that over the coming year. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to introduce you to a number of new techniques and ideas with uh, uh, enhancing your irrigation and therefore disinfection and by proxy, hopefully your success rates down the line. All right, guys, I'm heading back to the conference. Uh, with Dr. Koch is giving a talk and a couple of other talks, and I'll probably have that video of uh, talking to her after her presentation in a separate video, maybe on the social media. So don't forget to follow me on social media, uh, on Instagram and uh, Facebook, and so on, and LinkedIn as well. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you exceedingly much. And I want you to download the app, and I want you to get the document, AAEB, and the document, Case Clinical Assessment Day.
All right, I'm here with Dr. Ann Kosh right after her presentation, great presentation on the topic of contemporary endodontics for the recent graduates, Annie. Absolutely. Annie. Well, uh, I know you've had a presentation all day, so you must be super tired, but let's, I just wanted to quickly cap, uh, to get you and ask you a question. Is what is the summary of the whole thing in terms of what is your advice for the recent graduates? How can they improve their skills? How can they be uh, better at doing endo? First of all, you know me pretty well, and let me correct you, I'm not exhausted, I'm exhilarated. Awesome. And I really am exhilarated. And one of the things, uh, and I've felt this way for a couple of years, I think it's been very unfair, the lack of clinical endodontic education for students in undergraduate dental colleges. Uh, the curriculum has enough cases, too many endodontic programs take too many of the cases. And what happens, there are recent graduates who've only done one or two canals. That's not right. And there's a number, believe it or not, who actually have never done a clinical canal. So what's really exciting to me, Ali, about working with the group today, and we had like a full house with 200 people, they were terrific, is that this group of younger dentists, and I'm talking people five years out of school or less, they actually, to me, have a very genuine interest in furthering their knowledge of endodontics. Right. And the thing that I keep saying to people involved with schools on the undergraduate level for endodontics, if you don't have undergraduate students doing endo, two things happen, both of which is not particularly good. If you don't do endo, you become afraid of it, you become intimidated. Right. And secondly, if you're not doing clinical endodontics, you don't know where endodontics fits into the overall treatment plan. One of the wonderful cases I show was an apicoectomy by Dr. Nase, where everybody else would come along and say, my God, both roots have failed, there's a big post, you better take that out, extract it and place a, an implant. Ollie went ahead, did a, just an amazing job with the apical surgery. That's part of the treatment plan. That person, that patient is so happy that they have a natural tooth there. Right. I mean, one of the things we all learned from the pandemic is that endodontics is essential dentistry. Absolutely. And so everybody understands the value of endo. Right. And endodontists are people who save teeth, right. essentially. So by having an understanding of various methods through endodontics that it could save teeth, that's essentially what and, you're trying to do. And I, I could go on here for another hour, you know that? Of course. But one of the things that I like about real world endo, and that's the separated real world endo for 20 plus years, is that we've made a conscious effort to create techniques and technology that's easy to understand and everybody can reproduce it. Uh, if you think that Ali and I could not create some kind of totally confusing, complicated <laughs> you know, process, we could do that. But the idea is to create techniques that's gonna allow the greatest percentage of clinicians to do stellar endodontics. Right. I'm actually very upbeat at the desire of these young dentists to learn more about endodontics. Yeah, no question about it. I mean. It is nowadays through the different uh, modalities for education, whether it's in person, online, webinar, so many different ways. The only, uh, you know, the only thing is a will. Right. And uh, I think, given the fact that I think this pandemic kind of cleared us out of how important endo is. Right. The other thing also, Annie, is I think people have come to understand that implants are not the promised land Absolutely. that they were told. Right. It's not just in terms of functionality, it's in terms of price. It's disingenuous. Right to have a school say, well, just take it out and place an implant. Single tooth and implant is, Boston is what, $10,000? Close enough, yeah, close to that. Yeah, you know, and, and I seven, think the seven. other thing that's really important here uh, for people running meetings is the demand for quality, hands-on experiences. Right. You know, I know everybody's in love with Zoom presentations and online, but you sometimes have to work physically with your hands. Right. And when we at Real World Endo do a hands-on, we're putting a finger on the hand pieces. Feel the rhythm technique, one back, two back, three. And when I speak to these uh, young dentists attending a lecture like this, the first question comes to my mind is, do you have a hands-on? So they really want to learn, and I think it's incumbent upon program directors at these conferences, Al, to include a quality hands-on experience yeah. with the lecture. Yeah, so I mean, maybe you can catch us in one of the hands-on courses that yeah, you give. Absolutely. I know you're, you're wonderful at the one-on-one -on -one approach with giving the hands-on courses. And uh, what do you think about the meeting overall? Chicago has been great, huh? Uh, I, I love coming to Chicago. No, there was a, a, a gap of about eight years where I hadn't heard, and we used to do this routinely, they had the wrong email. So I'm thrilled to be back. Uh, I certainly wish the AAE every year was in Chicago. It happens to be in Chicago this year because Chicago is so well situated for a convention city. That's right. The hotel situation, the restaurants are good. Uh, we're trying to determine whether the bars are good. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great city. It's going to be easy to find out. Exactly. And, 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 I love, and I love the attitude of the people in Chicago. There's a Chicago attitude and an accent 
that uh, I think is absolutely terrific. For sure. Well, it's been a great meeting, Annie. Thanks again for another wonderful, successful yeah. course that you had. And the participants were all really uh, uh, happy at the end. I spoke to a few of them. So uh, we'll be back in Chicago for the uh, AAE meeting, as well as I guess I'll be back at the APACES meeting as well uh, a little bit absolutely. later on. And, uh, so terrific. And one final thing, I do love the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Have a great meeting. Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, take care.